Hello, Peter. Hello, Lilo. So good to be interviewing you today. It's wonderful to be here with you, even if you're only on screen. Yeah, it's going to be an amazing conversation we're going to have here, my delicious co-creators. I know that this is going to be really precious, especially for what's going on in our lives right now. Uh, because what I love about your work, Peter, and I hear your name here and there, you're really the expert around money, amongst other things. But and I, I love when you also speak about the being source of a project, uh, person source that is, you know, but today it's really about the money conversation first, because there is, it feels to me like there is abundance everywhere, all around, and yet only some have access to it. And um, you, you're teaching so many things. And in 2003, actually, you wrote the book 30 Lies About Money. And you have done many seminars and trained people and all that. And there's, there's one thing you say is that, you know, the way we see money is just a projection. It's a mm -hmm. projection. Whatever we think about money, and tell me if I'm wrong and please explain more. Like whatever we think about money is what we're going to basically have. Yes, that's. Correct. I mean, you know, you've got it in a nutshell. So tell us uh, more. How come? And uh, tell us how, how it's important to get it and to understand that whatever we think about money, this is what we're going to actually live. Well, you have to understand um, how money works. Um, that money is not a material thing to start off with. We, both, mo we mostly think it's something material. But anyway, you can quickly see that it's not material because the money that we think of is all in an account. Most of our money is in an account somewhere, in, in a bank's account, not even close to us. So it's in thin air. Yeah. And if, if one asks, okay, well, where is it really? Then the obvious place that you have to find it is in your head. Yeah. So this is quite radical for many people when you say it. But actually, your money is actually in your thoughts, in your head. You can't locate it anywhere else. And so you mentioned the word um, projection. What you do is you project the thought from your head onto a medium, like a neutral a piece of paper or a piece of metal, or most of it's in thin air. And, and the first important thing to recognize is that is how money works. It works from a projection, an idea in your head, projected onto a neutral medium. And um, if you're conscious of doing that, you can choose what you want to project onto these, this medium. And that's how you will realize your projects and that's how you will use money well. But so what's not... the variation of thought? So it goes from what to what? To total scarcity, like money is only for some people, to... It's, it, you, if, you, if, you have, if we had a flip chart in the background and you started asking people what money was, uh, which is how I started um, realizing how it works, you will have 40, 50 definitions within a minute. Mm -hmm. two minutes from people. So everything under the sun can be projected onto money. So the usual things, are the positive things are things like security, happiness, freedom, uh, your self-worth. You think that if you don't earn so much money, you're not so much worth. You think that if you don't have money, you won't be secure. Um, and ultimately, things like existence. You say that you can't exist without money, for example. So those are some things which are like positive attributes, but then there are negative attributes. Some people say money creates war, uh, money is a source of conflict, it's really heavy, it's dirty. So you can project everything under the sun um, onto this medium which we call money. And, and it's a pure human creation. It is a pure human creation. Um, and it was, in my view, not everybody agrees with me, but in my view, it was intended to be something constructive to help us. For example, um, there are arguments about its history, but one of the things it would logically help us to exchange our goods and services with each other in a constructive way. And, um, and what's happened is that we've lost consciousness of how it works. 
And without, without that consciousness, the, it's kind of inverted, it's turned upside down. So money was supposed to be our servant, but in a sense, it's become our master. You hear people saying, you know, money makes the world go round. No, money doesn't make the world go around. You make the world go around. You're just not conscious of what's <laughs> happened in your relationship to money. And then you have the impression that it's money that's driving you. That it's money making you do stuff, work that you don't like doing, for example, every day. But it, it's actually not money. It's just your loss of consciousness or your lack of consciousness from maybe your family background, your you know, inheritance going back for hundreds of years, 300 years, um, that has led to that automatic conclusion without giving it due awareness. Because it can go all the way. I, I, I remember the situation where I found myself in my life with no more money and I had the feeling that I was going to die. Like I felt like I was missing air, you know, like, like there yeah. was really something that will totally collapse. It's a, it brings huge fears. And right now, a lot of people losing their job, etc., are in yeah. this massive fear. So how, how can we flip that in those moments where it feels like there's no solution at all? Yeah. Well, one of the major subjects that's being projected, and particularly now, onto money where we are living in a world with COVID and such insecurity and such uncertainty, is that money um, is something which brings security. Mm. So what's happened there? Let's just take that as an example. You know, If you say money is my security and my existence, which is what you're saying, I can't live. <gasps> I'll, I'll lose my breath if I don't have money because I won't be able to exist anymore. What you're actually doing is taking this part of you which is still inside you. You were born in security. You, were, you exist. From the moment you were born, you, you exist. Yeah. And you're not, in, you're not about to die whether you have money or you don't have money. Yeah. But there's a part of the, your mind is saying, if I don't have it, I won't exist. So the part of you that exists is not living. The part of you that is secure inside yourself is not living. So it's projected outside yourself and you're saying, I need money to feel secure and exist. And that makes you run after money and do all sorts of stuff in your life, which you may not even like doing. Yeah. And the problem is that that cannot resolve your feeling of insecurity or your fear of not existing. Yeah. You would just If you're successful, you would just make more money, but that won't touch the inherent difficulty. Yeah. So, so what you to so we use it as an excuse. So what? we use it as an excuse. We use it as an excuse. In a sense, it's an, our in, unconscious drive, which is running, which is making us run after it, and we can look at the origins of that if you want. But just to say, you asked, what do we do? What you need to do is reconnect to that part inside yourself, which has been secure all the time. Mm. Reconnect to your existence, your real life existence inside of you. And this is the part of the key which um, is so important. You need to connect with both sides. So you need to connect with your security But you also need to enjoy feeling insecure yeah. as well. Yeah. And when you can feel insecure and feel perfectly happy with being insecure, and that's what a lot of people need to do right now because they're going to be losing their jobs, it's then that you can start understanding and looking at what you want to do in your life uh, and start to love what you're doing in your life. Because until that time, all you're doing is running on a hamster wheel trying not to feel insecure yeah or trying not to have this feeling of choking if your money runs out and you won't be able to exist anymore yeah. so that impels you to keep running and keep running and keep running and and you're not really existing yeah that's so, what happened to me when i lost my job went to yeah. live at my parents at the age of 32 over 10 years ago no more money. I felt like I was going to die. And then my life mission, can I say, or something really bigger that makes a lot of sense. And what I do now has been able to emerge after that conversation of the whole money yeah. choking thing, yeah, because I was like totally I, uh, identifying with it. 
you, it's it's like a crisis, and many people need will be going through this cri existential crisis right now. And actually, if I hardly dare say it, but I dare say it. Yes. But this is really a great thing. Yeah. Because people are on this hamster wheel and not really living, and thinking they're kind of living, but knowing they're not really. And this crisis, you know, you don't need to go into a crisis if you go through this process voluntarily. But if you don't go through it voluntarily, you're going to be in a crisis. And crisis, as you know from the Chinese, means opportunity. So there are going to be many, many people going into crisis. And I've been preparing my practitioners in my work for this for years now. So I have, you know, you know, of course, Christian Gino, he's one of the practitioners. In We're Switzerland, prepared. yeah. In mm -hmm. Switzerland. I'm, I'm in Switzerland too. I'm in Zurich. We're prepared and been preparing to help move people through you know you don't need to go through a crisis if you're willing to to be open enough to do this process voluntarily and it needn't take a lot of time it's, yeah. it it can be quite easy and it can be quite quick so where's the switch is there a switch is there things to know so that we can start to open our mind and see really what's going on yes do so you need to look It's very simple. The process is very simple. You start by looking at what is money for you. Mm. And that reveals already on the surface um, what you are actually projecting unconsciously. And this is how we start all our processes. What is money for you? And then you see things which are negative, which are positive attributes, which will be making you run after money. And maybe you'll get, be getting savings, but they don't touch the thing you're really looking for. Or then you'll have negative attributes like money is dirty, land money is evil, money is heavy. With that, automatically you're not aware, but you're pushing money away from yourself. And you're not having enough money then to pay your rent. You're getting into debt. You're get, you're, so you're on another hamster wheel, which is going on the opposite direction. And many people have both hamster wheels running at the same time. So they're running, they have positive attributes and negative, and they're running after money like crazy. And when they have it, an inheritance comes, they, they push it away and say, it's not mine. And they're like, I call this like a washing machine. They're a lot in, of uh, sabotaging, a lot of auto-sabotage, yeah. I know you say in French. Yes, yes. So, so that's the first thing, to realize where you are. And... And it's helpful for many people just to look at their bank's bank statements. You can do this very quickly. If you're chronically saving, unless you're really conscious of this relationship to money that you have, you're probably running after money. If you're chronically in debt, you're probably pushing it away somewhere. And if you're chronically around zero, you're probably running after it and pushing it away. So that's the first step. You can do a, a self-diagnosis pretty quickly, actually, yeah. just by looking at your chronic state of your bank account. When you move something in yourself, when you develop yourself, that may change. Yeah. And this is the process we use to help it to change. Yeah. Yeah. And you, you, because you dare to put, uh, I was going to get into money and soul together. But before getting there, it's important to notice that there is multi-millionaires, billionaires that are not, not feeling safe and will, will feel like they'll never have enough money. That's Many. their own insecurity. No. So we can start to stack as much as we want on accounts. It's, 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 it's not making any difference because the real insecurity is not dealt with. That's right. So we have, you know, ultimately, if you start having a lot of money and you put it in the bank, you will be told to buy securities by your banker. <laughs> They're called securities. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and actually, if you if you ask your banker why, he will say, "Well, you'll need this to secure your old age and secure your existence." Now, this is an enormous trap, because even Bill Gates and Warren Buffett, the richest men in the world, and now Jeff Bezos, haven't yet secured their existence. Why? Because it's impossible. So you can't secure. How are you going to secure existence? I mean, existence is, you know, all of life, all of nature. <laughs> How are you going to do that? Yeah. It's really funny when you think about it. Yeah. <laughs> I go to make billions and I'll somehow secure your in my existence. Yes. No, it's impossible. You see, so there's the trap. So 
you've got to become aware and conscious that actually life works in the other way around. From the moment you're born, you know, a mind born, it's existence that is securing us. Mm. We don't have to do anything to secure our existence. We're not even meant to try. We just have to accept that we exist and that existence is actually, until the day our last breath, existence, we should be grateful. It's existence, whether we have a lot of money or a lot of debt, is securing us all the time. And that's empirically so for every person alive on this planet right now, even those that we think might be suffering or those that have no little water and so forth, exist, they exist, and exist is secure, continuing to secure them, the existence. Mm. So that's one major trap. The other one, which I like sharing, is, is that the belief that we need to deserve existence. Yeah, we that's are, it. I was going to ask, yeah. Because we don't the, all feel like we deserve. Yeah, we're the only creatures on this planet. I'm sure. I don't remember being a cow or a sheep or, or a giraffe. But I, I really, when I look at them, I don't believe that any of them are trying to, to merit their existence or deserve their existence mm. or to earn their living. Mm. That's another one, yeah. Which is the same thing. So it's, it's we that have created this and we created it, was created about 300 years ago, these concepts secure your existence, earn your living, for very good reason, to impel the Industrial Revolution. But that's a whole other story. But actually, we've, we've become so automatic that we, we believe that unless we do something to receive acknowledgement, we haven't earned it yet. But wasn't that installed? I have to get into this conversation, Anna, because wasn't that installed by a financial elite? Is such a thing happening, really? And there are some thoughts like that that could have actually led us to think this way so that we buy more and spend more and get things outside of ourselves and they can get richer? Or is there such an agenda? Um, you know, there's, lot, there's been always lots of talk about financial elites and it may be so but if there is i can assure you they are as trapped the people who are, in it are as trapped as everybody else i love it yeah of course <laughs> uh, so you know there's talk about the illuminati and i will say well if so i'm probably one of them and it's perfectly okay <laughs> but but you know i think these are uh, these conversations don't tend to go very far but the The whole system we have right now, yeah. the monetary system, was created by some by a, an elite in the 16th century, in the fifth, in the 17th century. They were highly intelligent people who uh, created paper money ultimately after alchemy failed. And the reason was, it's at the time of the Enlightenment, was that they, they saw the evolution of science and industry. They saw the potential for material development, which ends up in the pharmaceutical industry, the railways, central heating, that we can even be on Skype. You know, we need to be grateful for all these, this whole mm. 300 years of development that we can even talk like this. Mm -hmm. And the design of the money system was created by these people to impel industry. And it was brilliant. And it, well, they weren't sure when they did it that it would even work. Um, uh, they tried for 30 or 40 years, they tried alchemy. They thought they could turn, because the idea, the thing was, they thought they needed more money. Money was gold, and they didn't have enough gold. So they thought, we, they, we'll try alchemy, we'll try and turn lead into gold. Mm. They even brought, imagine then, in the 16th century, bringing somebody over from the United States, the leading alchemist. They brought over to, to England from, from the United States trying to turn lead into gold and it didn't work. Hmm. So then um, it was John Locke, the philosopher, who came up with the idea of paper money. Huh. And, and that was the, and they didn't know that that would work. So, uh, so they brought in, to make it work, they brought in the most respectable people in society who were, at that time, spiritual, the Quakers. Do you know the Quakers? No, the, apart from the brand, but... Uh... No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, no. <laughs> Let's look it up. The Quakers were people who 
received the word of God. Wow. And, and when they received the word of God, they started shaking and quaking. Like yeah. This. Yeah. The, the energy. Yeah. And the the original bankers were the Quakers. It you know the origins of the money system go mm. back to the. Uh, the uh, 16th, the, I'm not sure, 16th or 17th century. I think it's the 16th century. Bank of England, and these bankers were Barclays, Lloyds, and they were the the people who were respected, most respected, in society. And they, because of their respect, people trusted the pieces of paper that guaranteed uh, the promise on the piece of paper. And even until recently paper money in England, in Great Britain, has had a promise on it. I promise to pay one pound. That was originally one pound of gold, signed by the governor of the Bank of England, even until recently. Mm. So that's the origin of the system. So the origin of the system had a very distinct purpose, yeah. uh, including the story around securing your existence, uh, meriting your existence, in order to pull the people from the fields into the factories. Yeah. And if you, look at, if you look at what's happening in China right now, it's exactly the same thing. The people being drawn into the factories have been drawn with the same promise. Come, mm -hmm. into the, come into the factories, off the fields, and you will deserve your, you know, you'll earn your living. It's called uh, gagner la vie en français. You'll, you'll merit, you'll win your life, Hmm. And at the same time, you will secure your existence. That's the, the promise there. And it brings people into doing this mechanical work on a, on a linear production line. Yeah. So, so, so um, since money depends on our projection on it, uh, you know, we, we talked about how we go about it, but, you know, is there... How do we still go about it? Like we need to continue so, to get into this conversation. Yeah. So the, the first part is to diagnose, as I said before. Yeah. So you you now realize, can start to realize if you ask yourself, what is money? You can start to see what you're projecting yeah. onto, what your projections are. Now, the second part, and this is so important, and I think you may have had experience of this from Christian, is to actually reconnect to these qualities inside yourself. So this is what I developed, as, as I think you know, um, over, over a period. Um, looking, I live in Zurich, which is the home not just of money, but of the Jung Institute of Carl Gustav Jung, mm. who is actually the father of projection work, mm. or the grandfather. Mm. And, and uh, the question, he was looking particularly at animus and anima, how we project into each other in terms of relationship and how to resolve that, he thought, was to remove, you know, I make you my goddess mm -hmm. uh, and you make me your god and actually we get trapped mm -hmm. in our relationship with mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. and, and that I have to, to, to free myself, I have to see that you're not, you know, I have to pull the goddess out of you, you have to pull the god out of me and we get realistic here. Mm -hmm. So I started experimenting with that, and I saw that that didn't go far enough. Mm. So I have to, to make it work, and in your terms, I not only have to pull the goddess out of you and say, well, you're not a goddess, I have to find the goddess in me. Mm. And you not only have to pull the god out of me, but actually have to find the god in you. Mm -hmm. So it's about reclamation. Mm. So now transferring this process onto money, so if I'm saying money is my security of my existence, mm. I have to reconnect with the part of me that exists mm -hmm. and that is secure. And, and I, the, the process I discovered that works very well is to use language, mm. you use words and phrases. In the Bible it says, you know, the, at the beginning was the word, there's some wisdom in that. Um, so I've been using words and phrases. So, the, for example, for your security, you say, well, I am secure with, um, with money, which you think you are, but also without money. Mm. So I'm secure with and without money. That's a good sentence that we can repeat ourselves to start with. 
Yes. So you. So what you need to to recognize is that just saying it and having an intellectual understanding is insufficient. It needs to be integrated throughout your cell, into your cells, into your body, reintegrated into your body. So these phrases we use, this is the process for uh, reintegration. Yeah. And you need to be able to say then, I'm secure with and without money. Now at first, this is where the lies come in. It'll feel like a lie. Yeah. But if you must recognize that if you don't tell yourself a lie, if you keep telling yourself your own truth, nothing changes. Uh -huh. So if you want to change something in your life, you've got to start by telling yourself a lie. Mm. We're dealing here with good lies. So mm. I tell myself, you know, I, I can't imagine, most people can't imagine they can be secure without money or exist without money. So I'm going to tell myself this lie and I'm do I don't even mind that it's a lie. I don't have to believe it. But I watch what happens in my body as I say this. And I keep I say it to myself, and I can notice some movement happening, or some emotions, and sometimes it can even bring people to go into tears or something like that. So I say I'm I'm secure with and without money, until I can feel there's a kind of an opening in my chest. I can breathe easier. <laughs> I'm secure with and without money, and I notice, you know, existence, all the animals and so forth, they're all secure. I mean, I think they're secure with money. They don't have any money, and a baby doesn't have any money, but... And then I need to visit the other side. I need to be able to say I'm insecure, so I say to, to you, please try and say, what, see what happens when you say I feel insecure? And you say, I, no, 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 I, I, I don't want to go there. I don't want to feel insecure. And I said, look, just go ahead. Try. Mm. See where, where, where it goes in your body. Do it consciously instead of uh, it's there anyway. And give yourself permission to feel insecure. Mm. Because actually, if you can't feel insecure, you're missing a lot in life. You mm. never take a risk, never have an adventure, probably not have much of a love life. Imagine trying to be secure in your love life all the time, be secure. If you never take a risk in your love life, open yourself to a nice adventure, <laughs> uh, nothing much is going to happen. Mm. <laughs> so, so, so enjoy. Start getting into feeling insecure and seeing that that's okay. Yeah. Uh, that, that may be even good and that, that it, it could be even be quite fun. So feeling insecure with or without money? Well, that also. But the main thing is to feel insecure and enjoy it and go as far as you can with that. Wow. And then at the same time feel secure with money and feel secure without money. And if you feel still insecure without money, that's okay. You feel insecure and it can be quite fun. Yeah. Now when, when you've integrated a polarity like this, two things which are completely opposite, you can tick off uh, security as a subject in your life because you will be happy feeling insecure and you can choose the situations where you know uh, Christian did a bungee jump once I think you may have seen his video you know you can't possibly feel secure standing at the top of a, a mountain uh, 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 without uh, 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 jump off uh, uh, uh. So you're not don't allow you yourself to feel insecure you never take, have this great experience or adventure so you feel insecure, if you allow yourself to go all the way to feeling insecure and it's okay, actually that's where you discover what it feels like to feel secure. Mm. It feels to me like once you have stepped in that and really felt it inside your body, it's like it never comes back. That's right. Like it's, it's done, it's dealt with, there's a new paradigm, there's an opening. That's and right. it's, not, it's just not there anymore. There might be some other stuff, but that's dealt with. That's right. You got it. Which is huge. Take, it's huge. You take it off. Yeah. And then you take it off and then the next subject will come. Yeah. Because it's a, life is a continuing process. Yeah. And as, as you continue, your, your competence grows and grows to handle more and more situations in daily life. So when do we switch to there is something greater than life here, totally going through my body, and and living through me and there's there's so many possibilities and i'm just free you know unlimited to create and to do and to play and to 
help and to support and serve you know there is yeah. this there's this faith <laughs> at some point that comes in yeah so when does that kick be... in <laughs> <laughs> i might have to ask you <laughs> i feel this way but i, I felt like it was a process it's a process you obviously way. have reached it i think you're doing what you love and maybe you have been doing it for many years and maybe at a point weren't doing what you love in life and and we're trapped by your projections so as you say it's a process and and if you are willing to go into this process i call it to the my practitioners i call it like brushing your teeth you mm -hmm. you you notice where you're feeling frustrated or uh, feeling jealous or feeling guilty. Then you know you've got a, you know you're projecting onto something. You find out what it is, you reclaim it, and you're, you're that little bit freer. There's, mm. I'm not talking about an absolute freedom, but you're certainly freer than you were before. Mm. And if you keep doing that, you just get freer and freer and freer and freer and freer, and you find yourself doing more and more and more and more of what you will love in life because not doing that what you love in life feels like impossible less and less and less possible it feels like a prison um, so things that you could do before maybe 20 30 years ago and sort of suffer you don't accept just, it or you just don't you want can't, it it's just you not can't there. get anymore it would kill you and you make you ill make you ill very quickly and this is my, vi if you ask me, this is my vision for where we're heading and particularly with the COVID experience. I think masses of people are going to be going through this process in the next period. Yeah. And I have a new mission. I don't know if you've seen it. Gallup poll says that at the moment and for the last years, only 20% of people at their work in Western Europe are engaged in their work, really engaged and really enjoying what they do. 20% means 80% are not. So I've, got, I've, I've started a new mission and it's going out very, very well, quite fast, that in, by the 1st of July, 2026, 81% of the working population will love what they do and do what they love, hmm. 80%. I like that vision. And I think, I think the COVID, this, what's happening with COVID, with all the crisis and all the concerns, I think that this will really move us in this direction because people will have no opportunity to do, you know, hoping for get your job back. I mean, the chances of getting the old jobs back is just disappearing. We can see it happening before our eyes right now. It's totally, totally, totally unrealistic. The world has moved and is continuing to move. And if you find yourself, whoever is listening to this, you find yourself for God's sake, stop complaining and look what you want to be doing in your life. What, mm. what haven't you been doing that you would love to do and just start doing it because life will support you in doing that with and without money, with and without food, with and without whatever. And it goes back to always that question that I hear, but I can't, Lilu, because I need money to do that or I have a family to support or this and boom. Yeah, that's the um, conversation. The possibility stops. So that's when we go back that's... to feeling those insecurities and those. Yes. And that's when you, you know, if you can't get out of that, then you'll stay in it. There's nothing you can do until you get out of it and make yourself and everybody around you miserable. But if you can be conscious enough, and this is the question, can you be conscious enough to be willing to, to, to look elsewhere and move yourself. And if you're not, then, then join a, like a complaining group because there are lots of other people like you that can complain. You can get some consola consolation <laughs> from being in such a group is, is for it, as long as you want to be. Is it know? harder for women or for men to... It's neither. It, it's, it's the same I, I, in my experience. Whatever uh, countries have... or whatever, like Switzerland versus France versus the U.S. or England or... In, in the experience I've had in working in different countries, but I haven't worked all over the world, so I wouldn't make a, an unjust claim. But in the relationship to money, people like to say, oh, you know, the Americans are much more open. It's not true. 
uh, you know, on the surface, superficially, it looks as if there are differences. But as soon as you get into, uh, like a question that, that your listeners may ask themselves, I, I sometimes ask, um, you know, we say money talks. Some mm. people say money talks, you know, mm. money rules the world, money talks. So I, I, I like to ask the question, if money, if money could talk, what, it, what would it say about your relationship with it? Mm. What would money say about you and your relationship mm. with it? And, and then the next question would be, do you agree with it, what money says about you? Mm. And you could start there and, and, and look at that. Mm -hmm. Very so, cool. so, you know, really, it's, I, I'm making a little play de voyeur to, to really look into this because it, it's, it's really not about money at the end of the day. It's about you and your life. Yeah. Yeah. And being free human beings. Yeah. Really free. Not free as there is uh, the, the government is controlling us or there is this authority or there is the law. But beyond anything, like being free as Mandela was free inside yes. of his prison. Yes. I, I use the word liberation because, as I say, I don't, um, I don't hold out the, the absolute and ultimate freedom. But this, with, this, with these sort of processes, as any personal development process when it works, or group or company development process, what, if they're really working, they create an extra layer of liberation. There's, there's yeah. liberation and more liberation and more liberation. So we're talking about a process of a direction of freedom, yeah. uh, which actually has to do with personal sovereignty. I like the word sovereignty. Me too. You become, you become more and more sovereign, yeah. more and more responsible, more and more capable, more and more competent. You have more and more authority and also more and more power to realize what you want to realize in your life. And um, the ultimate is, what I suggest, is that you not only live well with that, but you will die well with that. <laughs> So, so my goal actually is is to have a great life, but also to have a great death. Hmm. <laughs> because, because you know, many people are hoping, and maybe some of the people who study religion are hoping that, you know, they do everything good in this life, and then they'll have a better life, or at least a good, you know, better life after they're dead. And they're sort of, you know, uh, investing for the future <laughs> yeah. in, in that kind of way. Well, my belief is that if you don't really make it uh, and then really live your life fully this side, you know, I don't, uh, my bet is that it's not going to be any better the other side. <laughs> so it's worthwhile starting now. Yeah. Um, we don't often associate spirituality and money um, and some people that are going fully for spirituality are a little bit crossed at, at money. What, what is your, um, what, what did you learn from, I mean, what can we, can you help us when there is yes. a, yes. this paradigm kind of confusion or? Yes, I can. Uh, money ten, in terms of self development, money is, is the last subject that generally comes on the radar. So people are much more willing to look at other taboo subjects like death or sexuality um, and other subjects uh, because they, we, we think money is material and it has really nothing to do with a spiritu spirituality. People who have entered and do this work and particularly the reclamation of projection work recognize this as the deepest, deepest spiritual work that they have ever done. And there are many people who consider, you know, just so like, you know, meditation, yoga, nothing against these practices, which are very good, but consider that that's sufficient to sort of enter what they call spirituality. It's by far, far not. That's a total illusion. And if you ask many of these people, what is money then for you? Because they, you know, they go into meditation, but they still need to go shopping at Aldi and Lidl. Um, uh, and they don't, can't bring 
the two really together. Or they think, well, okay, I'll go into meditation when I'm in, in Audi or Lidl, but that doesn't really help them either. Or they go create a meditation room in their business at work and think, you know, we're bringing all the employees. So they'll, they'll go into meditation in the morning and then that's a sort of spiritual business. Mm -hmm. <laughs> By way not. Mm. And usually, or very frequently, the, 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 the people will say, if you ask them what's money, they will say money is energy. Mm -hmm. They say money is spiritual. It's I really like, by the way, the little book of Stuart Little, Money Bible. That was pretty cool. He said that money Did is he? energy. Well, that's another illusion. Because that's just another projection. Right. Excellent. Let's go into this. So, so, so actually what you see with these so-called spiritual people, and I'm being a bit nasty now to them. <laughs> uh, is that actually they say money is energy, which means that that they are basically lacking in energy because they've projected this energy onto money. Do you understand? So yeah. if you, what what you've projected, you're missing inside yourself. Yeah. yeah. So I, I have met and I have in my seminars so many so-called spiritual people do, who don't have their feet on the ground yeah. properly. Yeah. Um, and saying money is energy and are actually on the verge of burnout wow. in their lives while they are teaching about energy and spirituality and so forth. Right. But when you meet them personally, they're on the, on the edge of exhaustion and burnout because they're projecting, they, they need to get the money from somewhere. And very often they see money as something, you know, money is energy but it's also something i don't need or it's something bad or whatever right. like that so if i'm generalizing now which is not a good thing to do but but there's that i've seen an awful lot of that in the so-called so-called spiritual world so the people that are really spiritual are able to access in my view all levels the level that you know of what of, of universal energy, let's call it that, and integrate everything into that with that. There is nothing that is excluded, including the human creation of money, which is, you know, which was born, on, in my view, on an inspiration. The creation, the, in, the invention was definitely an inspirational invention. You know, money, if you're looking at in, from a marketing point of view, and I am a businessman originally, and still am, if you look at it from a marketing point of view, money is, is being man's most successful invention. Mm -hmm. it's, the, I mean, it's still the most popular product mm -hmm. and far more successful than Coca-Cola. Uh -huh, yeah, for sure. Which is number two. Yeah. But money is still number one, by far. <laughs> You can't get around that. You, you put a lot of, we feel the love when you talk. Love around business and money. And there's the love. It's not positive thinking. It's definitely love. It's at a different, you know. Is yeah. it... Uh, it's, so, so when you do all this work and basically let go of, and liberate, and you, there is just that left? I think so. <laughs> so it's totally compatible with money. Yeah. Money like is love, love is everywhere. Yes. I mean, actually, you know, it's beyond words. But that is, that is really the essence and the bottom line of it all. The bottom of line of it all and all this work and all the work you're doing. And that, it, it is love. I mean, and it's like we, we're trying... I think we're bringing that consciousness back in and for whatever reason humanity kind of needed to go off on its journey in another direction god knows why and if there is a god one must ask god why but you know <laughs> uh, it's kind of we're on the journey i think home um to understand with the work kind of work we're doing to see that it is all love and You know, it came to me, 
I mean, just a little personal vignette, if you like. Um, it came to me as a total surprise as a businessman when I was 33. To in, in one of my first workshops I attended, to suddenly see that actually love is everything and everybody loves me and I love everybody. And, and that little epiphany, uh, which was actually a big epiphany, changed my life. And I suddenly realized, you know, um, I, it came out of me quite simply to, that my purpose here was to love business, love of, uh, to create love in business. Yeah. And that was the what impelled me to start researching money because I saw the people I was working with in business had fantastic dreams and visions and they were the powerful people I thought in society. Mm. And yet they were incapable I recognized of realizing their dreams and their visions uh, in not only in their business lives but in their personal lives mm. the majority of them. And then I got to see, aha, uh -huh, I have a feeling it's something to do with their or our relationship to money that we're not really aware of, and I must discover what that is. So that's the origin of how this came about. Are, are there some uh, beliefs that are harder to let go of, like are really deeply anchored, and you find out that these need particular work or focus or time? I, I wouldn't say that the any are more difficult than others because the, the, the setup of, in terms, if you look at it technically in terms of our projections, each one, each one of us has a different relationship to money. Each one of us has a different set of things that we're projecting on it, which makes it so fascinating to do this work because we can look at each individual and see, well, you know, this is, this is what's happening with you. Well, um, so. So for one person, some one subject may be very easy to work through, and for the next, the same subject may be um, incredibly difficult, but one wouldn't on the surface understand why. And we're dealing with the same topic, and we're even sometimes dealing with life histories around that topic, which are incredibly parallel and seem to be almost identical. So I have a lot of respect, you know, not to try and make any assumption around this is going to be easy or this is going to be difficult or yeah. this is going to take a short time or this is take a long time. I will only say on the subject of time is that there's a lot of things that we can do with this, if you understand this process, which don't need to take a lot of time. You know, I've had people who've said, you know, I've been looking at this subject with my therapist for 25 years hmm. and you've just solved it in two minutes. Hmm. How did you do that? Hmm. I haven't really done anything. Maybe they needed the 25 years. I don't know. Mm. But, but right now, I think we are being called for acceleration, to accelerate. I mean, at one level, we need to slow down with all this running around and this yes. the business we're all doing. Unconscious uh, yeah. things. Yeah, that's right. But on another level, the, my belief is that, we need, that there needs to be an acceleration in terms of the inner work to be able to work through these things one after the, the other so that we are more sovereign beings and, and develop wise systems for the future, including, including the, the, the development, and this is what I'm involved in right now, the developments of the future monies yes. and future financial system. How is that? Uh, can we talk about it for a few minutes? How is yeah. that uh, really... Um, uh, is, 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 is that becoming real? I mean, on we're, a larger in, scale? I mean, yes. we're, because we hear so many things right now between the dollar, the euro, and yeah. the collapse, and then international money and other monies being created. I mean, what's the whole. Can you summarize I, I, for us the situation we're, and where it's going? We're in, a, we're in a transitional moment. So there's going to be. Um, an old system, which is, you know, the, the system which has been running for 300 years needs to continue for a while uh, because that's our, our institutions are actually providing the fact that we can talk today. We need to be, as I, I insist, we need to be grateful. Mm. And we've never had better systems, you know, with Trump, with Biden, with everything. Mm. We've never had better systems than we have at the moment. Mm. So we need to be grateful for that, mm. and that we need, we'd be too fearful if they all collapse tomorrow, 
we've been total and utter chaos on the planet. We need to be really grateful that we have what we have at the moment, mm. however critical people are about them. And we need to build new ones, which are going to be the future. And they are actually being built. Mm. But the point is, and this is the fascinating thing, Lilo, mm. is that if you're, if you're trying to see them with eyes that can only recognize the present systems, mm. you can't recognize, you can't see what's going on. Mm, interesting. So they look invisible, but there's a tremendous amount of work going on at the moment, which you wouldn't see. And, you know, conventional, let's go back to the money system, conventional bankers won't be able to recognize what's going on mm. if they're remaining in their conventional boxes. They're building, their central banks are building digital currencies right now, but that's not, that's just a technical solution. But unless they have another level of consciousness, those technical solutions won't be solutions. Um, mm. But at the same time, there are people in the world mm. who are really working, and I'm sort of modestly one of them, who are working on new systems yeah. and are connected in different ways with each other. There's a whole network out there mm. and will bring these new systems when time is right down to, to earth and they will be very, very... Um, usable, particularly by the next generations. And the next gen already, for example, the coin I'm creating right now, the next gen understand that instantly, whereas, you know, the old school would, would laugh at it and think we're doing nothing, but actually, uh, actually the next young people uh, get it very quickly. So my, my coin is about, is, is a system for people who are doing what they love. So imagine, Imagine you're in the system and you know whatever you buy is being made by people who love what they do and do what they love. Would you like to join us? Oh, yeah. So Definitely are. not the same uh, vibration or the That's same right. So you're creating, you're creating a new coin with this new vibration. It's called, I can give you the name because you'll hear about it later. It's called Intrinsic Coin. Mm. Intrinsic Coin with a capital C. Okay. Exciting. Yeah. And how do you go about it? So this is great to hear, but then how does it actually unfold? Well, it unfolds. This is where my source work comes in. You have to understand. You don't have to understand anything. You understand it already. <laughs> but, uh, but when you're... Um, uh, we all go about, when we realize our projects, we all realize our projects in the same way, I discovered. So it always starts with one person who has an idea and not only has an idea, but takes initiative to realize it. Yeah, that's such a it's, precious thing to understand, the person source yeah, of a project. Yeah. That's right. So, so if we look at something like the Berlin Wall coming down, that, that must have been started, that movement must have been started by one person at some point. And if you follow how the pro this process works, it may take time, but this is how everything is realized from, you know, from just going shopping and having a party to building Amazon like Jeff Bezos has done. It's actually the same process, just on which slowly moves out and turns into a movement. Mm. So this is this is what I'm working with, for example, with my coins. Just, I mean, I've been working on my work with what we're sharing today for over 30 years. Sometimes these things move faster, um, and other things move slower according to the time. There has to be right timing. Yeah. So right now, and this is. Stop news. This is the latest news, Lilo. Exciting! <laughs> I didn't expect this. I love it. <laughs> from from last uh, last Sunday, I pressed a new button, a go button, um, uh, for a, a series of congresses which I've been running from 1999. I stopped in 2006 because the it was too far ahead in the thinking. But I'm taking it up again, and I pressed the button now 
for a new for, for the next Congress on Money and Business Partnership, where we'll be bringing together um, as a platform uh, the people who are um, who are going to be leading in this in this question of the future of money and new monies, and it's going to be run in Outbach in Austria, a Congress uh, with 60 live people, and. Um, did, it's going to be a hybrid. It's, this is a new form of Congress. It's going to be a hy hybrid, and I'm counting on I'm counting on you also to send out more information on it. Of course, I'm counting on a hundred thousand digital participants. Wow! So I'm, you know, the time is ripe, you see, because so many people are going to be wor worried and wondering, well, you know, where, where do we go with with uh, with money right now? You know, where is it going to come from? You know. I mean, Donald Trump can press a button and there, and, and there are zeros and commas all over the place. But the, this system, you know, has, an, in my view, an, what I call an asymptotic topic life. It's coming gradually. It served its purpose. It served its purpose wonderfully. It still is. But it cannot, it cannot um, do, it cannot create people doing what they love in life. It's, mm. it, it, it's for a linear production line and serve that purpose mm. for material products. And we need the new systems for, for the future. And uh, this is what the Congress, my Congress is going to be about um, in uh, 2000, April 2021, 11th mm. to the 14th of April for anybody that's listening. Yeah. And we'll probably... Uh, it's, you know, I've only just pressed the button, so there's a lot of work to be done and design work um, and moderation work. Uh, but we will probably be introducing on a very, very simple level this new coin as well, a Trinity coin, um, into, the, into the process. So, okay. so that's, that's very much uh, running through me right now. Because you have studied many other currencies. Yeah. So the problem with all the other currencies up to now, regional and, and local currencies, they all have a problem. Mm. That is that they're, uh, except one maybe, um, but they all have a problem that the founders, the sources of them, haven't done this work with re reclamations. Mm. So they make their systems dependent mm. on the existing system. Mm. And that's the weakness. Because if I say, well, you know, um, I need to have so and so many uh, um, euros to exist or dollars to exist, and then I can do what I love with my new system, and I get in fear that my existence, I don't have enough dollars to run my new system, then the new system goes down. And that's what's been happening. There's not been and so much focus, you know, um, on the old while trying to fix the new doesn't mm. work because you need all the energy to create you can't new. be you can't create it from an angry perspective no you can't so this is why this is why my coin is called intrinsic coin because it's totally intrinsic mm. and uh, the key to it is that the, the technical key is that the the this currency will be unexchangeable for any other currency. It's going to be totally intrinsic. In other words, it's going to be used for the purpose for which it's designed only, which is to be able to trade with each other with goods and services that we love. So there's a cultural aspect. And then there's another new aspect, which is also key, which is that you can't just join it like this. You have to invest first. And to, in, to invest, you have to invest 250 hours of, of your time in doing things that you love for somebody else. Oh, wow. And that will get registered on the blockchain. Wow. So you can't just do it. Some, both of you have to acknowledge that, you know, that this has been done. Mm. And for each hour you put in, uh, you get one coin in your account. And so you invest first 250 hours of you, your time. If you don't yet know what you love doing, you have 250 hours to experiment yeah. and find out. 
<laughs> and then after you've done your 250 hours, a green light comes on and then you can start uh, trading uh, with others. And then it's not linked to time. It's mm. bilateral agreement. So what then happens when that takes, uh, let's say, enough space or so there's a significant amount or like the 100 monkey thing, you know, there's en enough people doing it. What does happen to the old system and uh, everything else? We In will place. find out. <laughs> I love it because you're not coming from what motivates you is not to collapse the system. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. As I say, you know, the key to this, and I, I've worked with so many people who've wanted to reform this and reform that. And I've, I've always, you know, spent a lot of time with them, reforming the money system, the most brilliant thinkers. And it's been frustrating in the end because they haven't been willing to do this inner work and wow. they have been shooting themselves in the foot all the time. Mm. Like with their, as you recognize, with the criticism and their anger and their frustration and so forth. And, and that, that cannot, you can't, mm. as I say sometimes, you can't go from A to B by starting from C. Mm. You have to start from A. Mm. So you have to... You have to be willing, you know, you have to be, as I say, the, you know you're there when you, when you experience the gratitude for life and for what is. And it's yeah. never too late to do the work. It's never too late. It's never too late. And, and who knows if it will ever be finished, the work. Because yeah. one of the things about being source of something is that you have to take 100% responsibility for your creation. Mm. So life is wonderful. Life gives you a wonderful mirror because some, if something is not working in your creation, you know it's you. You can't put the finger on anybody else and say, hey, you know, you've got to do something. You have to put the finger on you. It always comes back to you. Mm. This gives you the possibility to continue advancing, continue advancing, continue advancing. So I don't know if it ever ends, but I can only say from my experience, The more you do this kind of work, which I call money work, which we've been talking about, actually the less frequent after a certain time it becomes necessary because you've covered so many themes. You know, I'm not saying that I will have covered all my themes, I wouldn't dream to say that. But, um, you know, in 30 years and you've seen Christian, we cover and, we, and you see how Christian is continuing to do his work. Um, in every newsletter, he notices this, and I'm so delighted, he's so happy always to share what's going on with him. I feel that's incredibly valuable. Uh, he's so incredible work. And I'm happy to say that that's the quality which is going out in my community, with my practitioners, and that they're able to stand firm and help other people who are willing to, to move in a similar direction. When you say practitioners, it's people from all kind of... Uh... Walks of life. Walks of life, huh? Yes. Because Christian yes. used to be a banker okay. and became um, to help uh, hundreds and, yeah. and thousands to, in their relationship with money. So this can be, but this can be, you're talking about a, a, an entrepreneur or... It, or So Christian is actually doing, you know, teaching my money work. Doing yeah. It. yeah. But actually, my vision has always been people stay in their professions and just integrate the little tools that I've developed. So that's basically working. And that's why my, my community is almost invisible because people don't see me there. Um, I've been encouraging people to run and continue their own businesses, but just integrate the tools. So I have actually an enormous community, which is to most people invisible or almost to everybody except me. Um, and And they're integrated, so I have lawyers, artists, musicians, I have people from all walks of life who've discovered if they integrate this tool in their work, it accelerates their ability to do better music quicker or in, uh, become a different kind of lawyer. I have a, somebody in Belgium, for example, she actually, when she goes into court, she starts teaching the judges how to do reclamation work <laughs> and explain, can explain why the criminal has acted the way the criminal has acted, for example. Mm. So, you know, you, you can use this, this work. It's, it's not just the relationship to money. 
you can use this process in every walk of life mm. in every kind of way. So that's been my vision, and it's actually working that way. It's very nice. So, so yes, it, it goes out in all sorts of um, in all sorts of professions. So, can I ask you last question, Peter? What what motivates you then to do all this and to put all this together? What's your motivation? Uh, I love answering this question. I thought it was going to come to something like that. You know, I don't have really a, a very intellectual answer. Um, my answer is, and, and I found this answer because I needed to at one point. It's really, uh, Lilo, I've got nothing better to do. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yes. Like you. I totally get it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I got nothing better to do right now than talk to you. Wonderful. Well, it was a delight speaking with you, Peter. Thank you so much right, for this guys. delicious Thank interview. You. Thank you so much. And to all delicious co-creators out there, if you would like, please share this video. I think it needs to go wild online and to reach as many people as possible. This is please, a great conversation. Please, please, and become one of the 100,000 in the end, at least, or more. Wonderful. Thank you, Peter. Okay. Bye.